Hello and welcome to the Comic Spiracy episode 185 for the week of November 24th, 2014. My name is Ryan Higgins, who's with me this week. Rock Sager. And Charlie. Charlie, stop playing some some on your not tablet. What are you looking for? Well, right now I'm just looking for a 12-inch Samsung tablet at a good price and failing. But I'm trying. If you know a good place to get a 12-inch tablet, what would you say? Samsung. Samsung? Yeah. I'm looking at their 12-inch tablets. I can find them for 500 but I'd really rather pay 400 Let Charlie know. Insanity in Chaos on Twitter. Let him know. He's looking for that thing. I'm looking for a 10 but it has to be black for both of us. Awesome. The black one. You can't get the white one. Once you go black? Once you go black. So we've got uh, some random crap to talk about this week, but in a uh, in kind of an unprecedented, uh, I don't know, event here, man... I'm going to talk a lot about a comic book that came out this past week. So kick back, relax, enjoy me talking about Grant Morrison and Frank Whiteley's Pax Americana for like, I don't know, probably like a half this podcast. I am excited for this. Brock, did you finish? Did you get a chance to finish reading yes, it? Yes, I finished reading it. So do you want to get to questions and yeah, stuff first? Yeah, why don't we get to questions and stuff first? No, 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 because I'm just going to ramble and then we'll see what we have time left All for. Right, well, well, you, well why, don't, why don't we do a couple of news stories to get those out of the way yeah. so let, we, let, can, let, we can... Let's, let's, ble- let's, le- let's don't want to do the Patreon eat. questions so they can get their answers before we'll, you we'll, ramble we'll for... get to it. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk about it for half an hour. I'm going to talk about this book for a while here because I have a lot to say about it, but let's talk about a couple things here. Um... Yeah, I actually do have a question about this, so maybe I can talk about this and then we can answer the question. Uh, I don't think we actually talked about the first week of DC's Convergence uh, preview pages that they showed. We may have mentioned it briefly. I, I don't we know didn't if, talk in detail, but I think we yeah. mentioned something about it. I think we talked about some of the titles here. Uh, so last week we, it was week two of their previews of the upcoming titles. This is, of course, DC's uh, two-month filler event that's going to be going on while they move – Well. What would be their move to California? It's it's the books that were that would be worked on those months. So mm-hmm. you know these books will come out after they're already in um, in L.A. But we're gonna see these books coming out. I think it's uh, it was April and May. So two issues each. Um, we've had a new batch this past week with a bunch of bunch of. This is, seems like it's like this is like '90s DC is going on here. Uh, Superman, Man of Steel by Luby Simonson, uh, who actually wrote a lot of this as well, which has Steel classic Return of Superman Steel in it. Uh, we have Batman Shadow of the Bat by uh, Larry Hama and Philip Tan. And this is As Bats, the Azrael Batman for all you 90s Batman fans. Oh, geez. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Just like International, this is Fire and Ice and Martian Manhunter, Blue Beetle. Awesome. Uh, Red Tornadoes on this team too, which is kind of cool. Um, but what's funny is a lot of the villains, so first week a lot of the villains were flashpoint characters a lot of the villains in this uh week tend to be from kingdom come so like they're gonna fight well they don't say who they're fighting in this one this something from kingdom come um that old guy yeah catwoman this is catwoman with the big black boots and the purple outfit the the jim ballot one one. that's uh justin gray uh by ron and ron randall uh she's gonna be fighting the kingdom come batman in that one so cool uh, Supergirl Matrix by Keith Giffen and Roman Box. And this actually is kind of a weird one because it's – this is Matrix Supergirl. This should be Matrix Supergirl because that's the 90s version, the one where she's actually like a, yeah. like a purple blob. Uh, with, that with, hangs out with Lex Luthor a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah with, with uh, Supergirl, Lady Quark, and Ambush Bug. So that should be exciting. I love – let me – like Lady Quark. What the hell? Like when the hell was the last time she was in anything? Crisis? It feels like it's been forever. Uh, Superboy, Fabian Nicieza, and uh, Carl um, Maloney. And this is Connell, so people like him. He's going to come back. We got Hook Hand Aquaman by Tony Bedard. I do love me some Hook Hand Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. This actually looks pretty good. I like the art in this, too. So, uh, Cliff Richards. Hey, Hook Man. Hook, hook, hook Man. Hook, <laughs> hook Hand Aquaman is great. Yes, he's yeah, awesome. But it's a contradiction. I mean, it's a, aquatic things don't necessarily like hooks. Yeah. That's fine. He is the pirate Aquaman, basically. <laughs> Arr, where's his parrot? <coughs> he needs a parrot. We have Suicide Squad by Frank Terry and Tom Mandrake. Uh, and T's in this page is, is the traditional Amanda Waller. You mean the slightly obese 
Yeah. One. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's favorite, Green Lantern Parallax by Tony oh, Bedard. yeah. Featuring classic Hal Jordan Parallax. Is I'm it, super excited for that one. Is that classic? Is, is, is Hal Jordan being Parallax classic yet? Yeah, that, was a, that was a while well, ago. Well, if you want to classify anybody being Parallax as classic, it, it would be Hal. Yeah, 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 <laughs> sure. How long ago was that? Is it 20 years now? I mean, it's, Death of Superman was just over 20 years, so it's like 22 years, I think, yeah. 21 years. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's classic. This would, be, this would be right after that. Yep. Um, and then finally, Green Arrow. You know him. He's got the goatee. You love him. He's got that big goatee. So, yeah, that's some cool stuff. You know, I'm curious. I'll be, I'll be honest, you know, because a lot of people, and this actually goes into the question here. Let me pull up the question. Um, uh, basically, it's asking about uh, how we're going to do this, you know, as a retailer, how are we going to order convergence? Yeah, it's from Matt on Twitter. He says, retailer conspiracy. How the hell are you going to gauge interest in ordering numbers for convergence? And, you know, part of it comes down to talking to people about mm-hmm. it trying to figure out what people want, if it's interesting. If I think it's interesting, will it translate to sales for other people? Well, uh, are, are these... Everybody loves Parallax Hal Jordan. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I will admit the art on some of these, they're not getting their A-list art teams on these. The writing it seems like the, most of the writers seem fine. Um, some of the art looks good. Some of it looks a little like, eh, well, we'll see. So I don't know. Now, if... are, are these actual numbers in the series? Or is this like... No, it's just, no. they're all issues one and two. Because oh, okay. they're... they're there, it's forty-two issue miniseries. Okay. Yeah, so it's a it's two months a worth. It's two months, it's two of, months of a miniseries. But they're still doing the weeklies and during it, that time. Uh, no, no, that ends prior. And they're doing oh. nine oh, months. Yeah, that's right. They're doing nine months or nine months, nine weeks of because uh, it's going to be the two. There's going to be like a four four month and five or four week and five week month. Uh, so there's going to be nine issues of the Convergence miniseries going through it. So a new okay. weekly is taking over at mm. their place, but it's yeah. Convergence. Okay. No, I for, yeah, I forgot that it was ending before that. Yeah, but uh, Matt, you know, I mean, our the best way we do it here at the store is um, we go through and uh, actually print up little pull lists for our subscribers and regular customers and say, hey, here's the creative team. When we can, yeah. it looks like we actually have creative teams on these, which is good because we didn't for like the villains month books. Yeah. Uh, but here's here's the character titles. Uh, here's creative teams, what we have. And, you know, do you want to sign up? If Do you want just the books you get? So if you get Suicide Squad and Supergirl, you'll get these new ones as well. Mm-hmm. If you only get, you know, uh, Earth 2 and Grayson, you're not going to get anything because yeah. those won't have direct links over. You know, something like Justice League International, you know, uh, who's going to get that? So it, it can be difficult, but I like to give these guys enough uh, heads up as possible. So, yeah, usually just going online, getting orders from them. And then uh, we also will sometimes, and we'll do it for this, uh, offer a discount for people that order full sets. So we're going to try to get, you know, uh, it's, it should be 89 books total. So we're going to get some, uh, you know, hopefully some full set pre-orders, mm-hmm. which, you know, it's a grip of money, but you could save, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent or something like that. Yeah. Hopefully it's worth it. So. <coughs> Uh, I mean, I think it just—I think it just base, is basically based on how much DC kind of gives retailers kind of in advance, kind of hey, this is what's going on. Well, they have been, all right. I mean, that's yeah. what this is. No, they're, they're yeah, doing a good know. job so far. So closer yeah. to it, we'll see. You know, more so how that's going to play out. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I, I think in general, it's almost impossible to know which ones are going to have those. Holy crap! That was amazing. Yeah. Kind of feel to it. So, yeah. But it's also nice, I mean, for those people that, that are kind of like, no, I don't want to deal with all these random little books, but I want to just get Convergence. It's They yeah, have but one comic. They, they have Parallax How Jordan in there oh, and gosh. Kingdom Come characters. Do not come to the store on a Sunday while Charlie's working during this time because he will automatically <laughs> slip that comic in your purchase. Oh, come on. It's Kingdom Come characters, which is by far one of my favorite mm-hmm. comic, if not my favorite comic of all time. And then you also have Parallax How Jordan and all that thrown in there. The only way it could be better is if every title was written by Jeff Johns, in which case then I'd need a set for sure. I'd be down with it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? The amount of people grabbing every issue you will know, probably be pretty low. I know some people are, are not looking forward to this, but I think it seems cool. You know, you get to see some old version of the characters. Creative teams seem decent. So, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty... I'm pretty and it, it, they're leading up. They're they're leading up to this not only in the comic books, but also kind of in what's going on at DC Publications itself, where they're like, "Well, we're moving, so <clears throat> to give us time to move, we're doing kind of this 
your right. I mean, little I mean, event thing, and it's not something that you need to necessarily latch on to, but we want you to latch on to it because we're leading up to it. So, See, I just want them to announce some weird kind of thing like <laughs> the top 10 books sold through this way will get new trade paperbacks <laughs> of the classic material made or yeah. something. It could. It could. Uh, this because a lot of the like Parallax How Jordan stuff is out of print now, right? All of it, yeah. 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 Yeah, so there's like most of these titles are throwbacks to versions of the characters that you cannot buy right now yeah, yeah, yeah. within trade and such. So, but with your dollars, because I guarantee you, if these books sell insanely well on certain titles, they'll probably look at that as interest in putting mm-hmm. out sure, various sure. trades. Well, and part of this too for all the people out there, they're saying, "Oh, well, screw the new fifty two. I want the old versions back." Well, here you go. You're gonna, hopefully you buy them because and then there'll be a whole new group of people yelling i want my new 52 versions yeah, back yeah well we'll you know, be back in two months and worst case if these don't you know sell very well well you know what can you do it'll be two month blip and they're right back publishing their books out yeah. there and all the new 52 books as well their arcs are ending the month prior mm-hmm. so it's not like you're left in a cliffhanger like you were for like some of the zero year yeah. or zero issues or, or uh, you know well, at least it's not month. supposed to go that way Right, right, right. I'm sure it won't. Um, not the biggest news of the week, but uh, something I had to mention. Uh, Chip Zdarsky, who is one of my favorite writers, absolutely hilarious, is going to be writing a new Howard the Duck book for Marvel. Uh, art by uh, uh, Joe Kionis, who I actually don't know, but uh, I, Chip Zdarsky is... I've been following that guy since Prison Funnies, which is like a little indie book he did years ago, and such a funny writer. Uh, he's doing Sex Criminals right now. He's doing the art on that, and man, I am... yeah. If you're a Chip Zdarsky fan, if you're a fan of one of the biggest fans of Applebee's ever, uh, then you, you, you know what I'm saying. If you're a Chip Zdarsky fan, you understand Applebee's. Everyone knows how great Applebee's is. Um, then, yeah, Howard the Duck. Oh, I can't wait. That's going to be so good. Well, let's talk some movie TV stuff here. Okay. Michelle McLaren, uh, rumored director for Wonder Woman, earlier today signed an exclusive deal to develop and direct Wonder Woman movie. So we have our first... Marvel, or first Marvel, we have our first <laughs> uh, non, you know, sorry, non Justice League ish movie kind of, I mean, at this point, pretty much official. You know, I know mean, we got Suicide Squad, but, you know, obviously Wonder Woman's kind of the, probably the bigger deal. Well, she's the, the third of the Trinity. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's worked on Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones mm-hmm. and a handful of other TV shows. So I, this may be her first movie. I don't know. Could be. Um, but yeah, I'm always excited for more DC movie news. We'll be getting it. <coughs> You'll be getting it. When it comes out on Blu-ray, I'm sure Brock is going to uh, buy uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be going to see this. And kind of maybe the, I don't want to say sad news because we don't know anything about it yet. But, um, you know, we've had some pretty good success with Flash and Arrow and Gotham. Uh, Constantine has not had quite the numbers, although numbers have been going up on it. Yeah. As well as its non-live recording uh, or viewings has been really good. Yeah. So the 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 three day, seven day, the the yeah. on demand. Uh, but NBC has said that they're only doing the initial thirteen episodes, uh, which is the order it received. So it's not be it's not canceled. I mean, they received for thirteen. Sometimes they go longer. Sometimes they stick with thirteen. Yeah. And the way they're spinning this kind of has to do with the fact that because the show started so late, they always have within the contract that they have to pick up the back nine by a certain date, yeah. regardless of when they start airing it. Mm. So this isn't directly a cancellation or anything like that. And yeah, Friday night time slot is always well, you lose always out. It's always a death slot, you, yeah. You, you lose out on a on the 20-something demographic because most of the time those 20-somethings are going out and... Yeah. partying and people yeah. are going away for the weekend and stuff like that so it's it's a really hard time slot but i mean their numbers yeah. their numbers on on demand and yeah and watching later are, are much higher because those those people are coming back and watching uh, i'm i'm pretty much honestly my prediction right now based on all the sort of figures and what they've talked about is if Hannibal can keep going and going and going, so can Constantine. Right, that's I, my feeling about it. I had I had read something that I guess uh, the the producers and people behind Hannibal had kind of been throwing some money at uh, at NBC, even though the ratings weren't the best. A critically acclaimed show, and obviously something they wanted to keep doing. 
you know, it's possible Warner Brothers could throw a little money at Constantine and just say, hey, you know, even though it's not quite having quite the ratings, it's growing. We want to continue more. And even if we only get 13 episodes a season, yeah. that's become the standard for so many shows yeah. now. So, Well, part of the reason why I'm taking the position I am on this is this feels very much like what they did with Sleepy Hollow last year on Fox. Yeah, yeah. Where they didn't cancel it, but they decided not to pick up in fact, they announced we're not picking up the back nine, but yeah. we're renewing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. feels very much the same way. They, it's The only difference is I think they want to see how other things perform in the time slot. And if there's something that hugely takes off better than Constantine, then that would be a danger for it. But other than that, I think it's... Nothing will, though. That's the problem. Exactly. Well, which yeah, it's which like, leads to Constantine's renewal, which right. is why I totally expect Constantine to get well, renewed. It's like, yeah. I mean, you said you said so before, It's Ryan, it, um, <laughs> is that Hannibal to Constantine, Constantine to Hannibal, like the, the rotation during the year would be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, there's supposed to be some other shows uh, that are going to kind of take that slot because, remember, they're, I mean, they're, that's only half the year. So yeah. there, there's yeah. other shows that we could fill in those slots. But, you know, we've seen this with... You know, AMC and and especially a lot of cable networks and HBO, where they have the rotating group of thirteen episodes that just kind of come and go, and and then they fill in. So, mm. or like uh, Walking Dead is about sixteen, right? Yeah, and then they have their little off season. But yeah, there's always stuff that takes uh, takes up those missing that missing time slots. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I, I'm you know uh, Constantine's been good, and especially seeing the ratings going up, that which is rare as hell. Ratings yeah. never go up. So that that's the live ratings are you know that's great, and I will say this: working at the shop, it is the number one show people talk to me about with the preface, "I haven't watched it yet." Yeah, like they're always saying, "What do you think of Constantine?" I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. That's- of the of the four, it seems to be the one that the I know the fewest people that watch, but you know, Flash and Arrow are good at what they do. Gotham's good at what it does. Constantine good as as is good at what it does. They all feel different from each other. They're all yeah. kind of filling a niche. They all work well. So, you know, some aspects are better than others. But I, you know, this last episode of Constantine with um, Jim with uh, yeah, Jim Corrigan was oh, great. Wow. That was, was a I'm great episode. Still. Oh, sorry. So you know, I, I could you know, it's not as I knew he was on it. No. It's not as gory. It's not as graphic, maybe as as uh, Hannibal, but it's a good show, and it's they've done. I think they've done a really, really good job, at least with the the kind of the, the effects and the scaring, yeah. and just the in general kind of staying true to the character. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Good know, effects. The 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 guy they cast for Constantine, he's perfect. On, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could say typecast all you want. I don't give a shit. That guy is amazing. Well, so what's interesting too about Constantine is that. We have the we have sort of the beginning of the show where it's kind of the the thing of the week, you know, where they have the little artifact they are going to go tr- try to find or they're going to go go solve a mystery, and it is uh, not not formulaic, but it is it is you know this is a setup, right? I mean, we have this with Smallville, we kind of had this with Arrow, mm-hmm. you know, all these shows. And then there are shows like Psych or Breaking um, not Breaking Bad, Psych or um, Burn Notice, or all, especially these USA shows that are completely built around that for you know ten seasons, right? Mm. So I, I think they're you know they're getting their they're finding their spot. They're you know they're they're letting the characters build through these episodic episodes. Well, I think I think shows like this need to have that kind of baby stepping at the beginning, where you have you know. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It, it's kind of, you know, the same thing, but then you grow larger stories out of these, you know, the villain, you know, monster of the week or, you know, um, whatever happened, you know, like, yeah, the, we, we only have really four characters in the show at this point that have shown yeah. up with any sort of regularity. Yeah. So yeah, I think we'll, as the cast grows, as they get more story arcs going and yeah, you can see them ending on a cool kind of, you know, big, big, not cliffhanger maybe, but a good, Good season finale, build up for season two. So, mm-hmm. uh, so if you have not been watching Constantine, uh, I definitely recommend watching it I live if you can, or day of, same day. Yeah, in the article it mentioned like they even marathoned it on Sci Fi. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. yep. I think that got pretty good, decent ratings. So, yeah, definitely go check that out if you have not seen it. I uh, highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. And 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 if you saw Green or if you saw Arrow this week. Oh yeah! Oh I, man, I geeked the fuck out oh, when well, I watched well. that episode. <laughs> so I actually did want to talk about this episode of Arrow, but I also wanted to talk about something that one of our friends here 
uh, want to go do. So, uh, Arrow. We friends? Oh, Arrow. Yeah, we have a bunch. Oh, Arrow, yeah. um, this past week, uh, no huge. I mean, I guess it's a spoiler stuff, so be wary if you haven't be wary, watched skip it. Skip ahead. But it's not big spoiler stuff. Um, so, on the Flash Arrow crossover episode, the the big villain it is Captain Boomerang, mm-hmm. right? Which is, I think we probably I think we even talked about that in the podcast. No, I, no, we haven't talked about it yet because we haven't talked about TV in a while. Oh, I thought I, I mean I thought we talked about it when we talked about the Flash Arrow crossover, which is coming up next week. Yeah. So uh, this week's a, a couple weeks ago was off for Flash. This week's off for Arrow, mm-hmm. and then that lines back up. So when it comes out uh, next mm-hmm. week, this their, this their crossover episode. But uh, they had talked. Um, Captain Boomerang was going to be it, so he shows up at the very end of last week's episode, uh-huh. uh, and it was it was a cool. I, I worked. I like what they did. It was he was he looked cool. Um, you know, he throws the boomerang, and comes back, and stabs a guy in the back at the very end of the episode. And not like I, I just was, some random. I was still like, what the heck is going on in this scene? Well, yeah, no, and I was like, and then it's all of a sudden it's obviously Captain Boomerang. Yeah, and then and then it's like I'm like, is that? And then he pulls out the boomerang. I'm like, yes. Yeah. yeah. But right before that, we had uh, Ray Palmer looking at. Uh, yeah, his uh, his Iron Man armor, his Iron Man yeah. Adam armor. Yeah, I'd be curious about that. I know initially Arrow had said uh, the the showrunners and stuff for Arrow had said they didn't want to deal with too much superpowers, especially this season because we had a lot of it last season with Deathstroke. But I guess there's some interview with them today that came out because uh, like they're talking more about um, Flash because they're talking more about Flash and everything now because of Flash and Arrow. And because of the crossover, and yeah, people are saying, and, and or sorry, the producers and 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 showrunners are saying, yeah, you know, now that we've dealt more with a little bit more superpowers than this, he goes, I actually really like this. Maybe I do want to go back and do more superpower <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, it's uh, I I thought it was funny because um, Katana is yeah is uh, what's his, his name's wife. wife? Yeah. So I'm sitting there geeking out because it's outsider one more outsiders references, and I'm like, please. <laughs> um and then they uh with uh, cupid they dumped her with the suicide squad yeah it, it, that was and i'm like with the line to basically say harley's gone yeah <laughs> um but uh no i mean i they've just been doing a really amazing job kind of giving us these little nuggets and and introducing yeah. characters and stuff like that you know flash what, what was the harley line there was a line at the end where they made some comment about how she's more crazy or not as crazy as the last yeah, one the last, they had. The last female they had or something. Oh, I, yeah. Wow, I totally missed that. Huh. Yeah, so and appara- they, apparently, I, I don't know if this is true. I didn't get a chance to go back and watch. But apparently, if you watch the previous episode, Cupid's actually, the girl that plays Cupid is in a lot of the scenes in the backgrounds. Like they showed the pictures in the actual episode. Like if you watch well, the episode prior, she's actually in the. Scenes. Oh yeah, the episode yeah. prior she is. I don't know about any other yeah. episodes, but I was going to say it doesn't surprise me considering they ended the episode with her. It's mm. it's it's really easy to pay somebody to be. <laughs> well, it's well, it was yeah. that I, I think I didn't notice because I was just so uh, blown away by the uh, boxing glove arrow oh, that yeah. we got out of oh, that yeah. episode, yeah. which was awesome. Uh, I. I was at home. I'm like, holy crap. Rewind. Yeah. Play again. Rewind. <laughs> play again. Best boxing love arrow ever. Yes. Yeah, it was great. So, yeah, and no, Flash has been doing a really, really good job. They had yeah. a little bit more of uh, the uh, reverse Flash kind of tease stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think a lot of the Which stuff we're going to see. supposed to be their mid-season finale. Yeah. Well, Stuff Gotham's um, yeah midseason finale is tonight. Yeah, so I didn't. I kind of stayed off Twitter as much as I could because I wanted. I didn't want to see any Gotham yeah. uh, spoilers. Mm-hmm. Flash and Arrow there soon because it's a crossover, and then maybe one or two apps after yeah. that. Yeah, and then they come back what January or February. I think they come back February into January, February. Because Walking Dead mm-hmm. is over next week as well, or or this week. Technically, yeah. no, yeah, Sunday, right? So next week mm-hmm. is I yeah. think the last Walking Dead episode, and they're back in February too. So you know, man, there's a lot of shows, but now I get a few months to to catch up on other <laughs> stuff. To that, play that was some actually games. my thought process. Is like I can finally catch up on all the. Other stuff that's been <laughs> right. accumulating on my team. Warlords of Draenor is out. Smash Brothers is out. I got all sorts of stuff to do now. So, um, Let's get PS4 on Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot is it of coming with a Vita. 
No, what there's two different bundles that are floating around out there for the PS4. There's the Lego Batman Little Big Planet three bundle, mm-hmm. and then there's the GTA five Last of Us bundle. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. That's I don't cool. care about any of those games. Yeah, but considering they're basically being thrown in with the PS4, there's no price hike for yeah, adding the games. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want kill. Either way, that's a very good bargain. I just want kill zone. So the moment has come. Pax Americana. Ask Mul- the Multiversity first. Pax Americana. What's the one. question first? What question? The question. We, you said a listener had a question about it. About what? Pax. No. I said the listener had a question about uh, the conversion stuff. Yeah. Mm. Which we answered. Yeah. So, did you guys answer this, Charlie? Yeah. Because I know Brock right, right before we recorded. What's your, what's your take? Did you read it once? Did you read it? I read it once. From page one to page 32 or whatever? You yeah. read it straightforward the normal way? Yes. Okay. And the very first thought I had reading this book was very, very self-evident to my brain, and that is, so they're doing a sort of Watchmen universe as it was originally intended. That was like my first... Kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, it's just the more that it kind of got into it with sort of like the Captain Adam mm-hmm. and all the sort of like question blue beetle scenes just screamed of watchmen oh, yeah. and like oh yeah what yeah. the erectile dis- dysfunction didn't scream it <laughs> so uh, i thought that was really cool i like all in all i liked a lot of what they did in this issue yeah. but again it's one of those where i kind of wish i could see more of these universes rather than these sort of snapshots we're yeah. getting so far like uh. I could totally read a a twelve issue mini series of this world happily kind oh, of thing. I could never read another comic again <laughs> if it was just Grim Morrison quietly. On. And honestly, I was thinking about it, especially with this particular kind of event. How awesome would it be if they did sort of do a well? This was the original pitch for Watchmen <laughs> with the original characters, and yeah, 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 did yeah, yeah. a sort of. Yeah. Let's tell that story, but with well, the characters that were originally yeah. intended. And Okay, so Crazy Ryan, how many times did you read this? I think now I've read it six times. Okay. Now, how many times have you read it backwards? Twice. When does it, when, when does it flip? What do you mean flip? Because technically the opening of the book starts with... Well, so going- we can... Well, first, what do you think, Brock? Because you, you read it, you read it kind of quick. Uh, you did not like quick. the previous multiversity issues. You really? No, no, did. I, I liked the Conqueror's one. Did you? I thought yeah. you didn't. I, oh, I, I know you didn't I like you Just. Liked the I didn't first two, and then didn't like the. I didn't. Third. I didn't really care for Just. I liked some of it, but yeah. the the social networking stuff was just uh, I, I, when they go start doing that shit. I think Morrison's one of the few people that actually makes that stuff work because it, normally it's embarrassing. It was, it was bearable. Okay, but I still don't like it. Um, hence why I couldn't even get through half of Batgirl, yeah. 36 and why I'm done with that book. Um, no, I read it forwards, not backwards, because yes. I didn't have much time. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it screams Watchmen. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Like, the artwork yeah. and stuff that Frank Quietly does is just, it, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Again, I want to see more of this, the world, like Charlie says, um, and it's hard, especially reading it, because... It jumps or it, it's standard jumping around Morrison. Yeah. So I've kind of learned to try and jump with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I can I can definitely see the the infinity. Right. Well. The the what equation eight? Yeah, yeah. He's talking about the um. What text do you call it? Well, <laughs> that's the problem because it's the not algorithm. Yeah, algorithm, al- algorithm eight. eight. It's. So there's a couple of things in here that are tough to kind of figure out because I can only guess. I, I went through this book with some friends, um, had a long Twitter conversation on that one that it came out with a buddy of mine named Jesse. He actually uh, runs Hub Comics in Boston. So if you're over there, go over there. He's a super smart guy, super nice guy. Tell him I sent you. Um, he'll then laugh and say, I hope you don't like bad books like Ryan. But we both <laughs> agree that this is amazing, right? Because we, you know, Morrison, I think, is where we kind of uh, our paths intersect here. It's hard because I want to go through this book from back to front because that's how it makes sense. So you can actually read it three ways. You can read it just forwards, like you read a normal comic book. Mm. You can read it backwards, scene to scene, because it technically goes 
back in time, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so the beginning is the end, and the end is the beginning. Yeah. However, you can actually read, for the most part, word balloon to word balloon backwards, yeah. and it makes sense. Some It's interesting... Uh, I wish I had done more notes for this beforehand because I could actually pull out a few points. Well, you'd where need it, like 64 pages of notes. Yeah, because it's, it's interesting because it shifts the focus of the dialogue in a few pages where um, you're – if you read it forwards, it feels like the character's talking about one thing. If you read it backwards, it actually feels like the character's talking about something else. It's like similar conversation, but it's coming at it from a different angle. So there's a few points like that. Uh, well, that, that, that's what I'm wondering. Where is it? Where does where's the flip? Well, it never flips. No, no, because if you go if you if you go in the beginning, right, we're going backwards, right? Because we're seeing we're seeing that scene play out backwards. Right. Now if you go from the backward if you go from the back and read it, right. that scene as well plays out backwards. The scene where they assassinate the president? That scene plays out backwards in the beginning if you're reading it forwards. Right. So it's forwards if you're reading it backwards. And you're if you're <laughs> Yes, so it's forwards if you're reading it backwards. Right. But at the end, if you're reading from the for backwards, <coughs> right, that scene lays out the same exact way that the president scene lays out backwards right so uh, my question is is where in the center i don't i mean they're really there's I, a i mean okay i understand what you're trying to say it doesn't it kind yeah, of it kind of doesn't well well okay so hold on. so if, if we're gonna go i like, briefly i want to go over the base story of this Jeez, why don't we um, get copies i'm gonna go grab one i want to go well no it's fine it's fine just 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 wait just leave it i want to go over the base story of this real quick um there is an assassin well first of all um the Charlton Universe is what this is based on. These are characters that were bought by DC in like I want to say late seventies, early eighties, uh, and it was a pre- it was another publishing company, Blue Beetle, The Question, um, Nightshade, Captain Adam, Judo Master, Sergeant Steel. These are all characters that were from Charlton Comics. Uh, DC went. And, and we're going to introduce their characters. Alan Moore said, hey, let me use these for Watchmen. They said, no, we're going to use them, make your other characters. So we created Rorschach and Dr. Manhattan and all that stuff. So that's why this feels so much like Watchmen is because, yeah, he's, take, he's taking the Watchmen setup and basically using the original version of the characters for him. Now, the overall story on this is uh, it opens with the president being assassinated, uh, but backwards, right? President Harley. Um, so it's interesting that when they it kind of it's it's funny because the end uh, the beginning is sort of in reverse order like brock says Mm -hmm. but then as you know i don't think there really is a flip except for that very right just at the very beginning part there because that's the the one part that is backwards in the story as you go through this book you realize that there's obviously multiple layers of the presidential assassination. Um, the question is trying to find out what's going on. It appears that there's actually a setup by the vice president and a crooked cop to assassinate the president. Uh, but as you keep going backwards in the, in the book, you realize um, Harley, when he is actually a uh, just a governor, basically meets uh, you know c- kind of like his god. It meets Doctor Manhattan. I'm sorry, Doctor Manhattan meets Captain Adam, yeah. much like Dar- looking much like Doctor Manhattan, and straight out of Final Crisis as well, because those two Superman issues. This is the this is the version of Captain Adam that this is from, and you kind of slowly go back through his career. You see him uh, as uh, you know, sort of the creation of the um, uh, he he creates uh, the Texas guy's name. He creates. Um, I'm going to totally blank on, I'm going to blank on the guy's name now. Uh, he creates peace, uh, Peacemaker. Sorry. I'm trying to flip this at the same time. He creates Peacemaker, who ends up def- uh, saving President Bush back in 2005. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of, you know, you're, 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 you're seeing that there's this kind of like dual conspiracy of, of he creates the man that ends up killing him. Well, when you get to the very end of it, you see him kind of regress. Uh, as he's looking at a gravestone of his father, uh, would you can assume, and he, he sort of has this epiphany, and then it flashes back to him as a kid. He's playing with his dad's gun. His dad is Yellow Jacket, actually the first Charlton character ever mm. created back in, I think, the early 40s. And he shoots his dad uh, dead when his dad comes home from being a superhero. So 
you then have this story, if you go back and read it forwards, you kind of see what's, what, what's actually happening here is that the, uh, Harley, the, the son, uh, you know, becomes president later. What actually ends up happening is there's a line where, you know, he sees himself as this supervillain. He says to Captain Adam, you're what America has been waiting for. Only a superhero can do the impossible. Only a superhero can bring back the president to life. Only a superhero can redeem the ultimate villain and restore symmetry to a broken world. Uh, so Harley, you know, here is Governor Harley. Uh, he sees himself as the supervillain. And if you look at those pages towards the the very end of it, when uh, after he's killed his dad, I'm uh, oh, sorry, before he before he shoots his dad, uh, that scene there, you know the, the the resemblance there of him in this long scraggly hair and looking like Jesus to me is not uh, not you know by accident. He's basically he wants Captain Adam to resurrect him. Because that's the way, you know, I need to become this Jesus figure. You're this God figure. I, I need to be this, Jesus fig- this Jesus-like this figure. And he needs, he, di- needs, he needs to be the son of Christ. Well, he, he needs, needs to, to be resurrected. Well, he needs to die for his sins. Mm. He needs to be Christ. He needs to die for his sin and then be resurrected. And Captain Adam is the way to go about this as he sees, well, you know, I he mean, has like a Schrodinger's cat situation here where he has— uh, you know, two dogs, both alive and dead. Hmm. If you keep going forward, though, there's actually a brief scene where it appears that someone tries to assassinate uh, the president while he's giving – or he's, he's, he's uh, governor. He's, he's trying to run for presidency hmm. uh, right before the formation, formation of Pax Americana, which is the big superhero team here with all the Charlton characters. And this is where Dr. Manhattan <laughs> – I'm going to do this like four times, I swear. <laughs> this is where Captain Adam actually – Prevents him from wait, wait, Captain Adam or Captain Adam, Cap- up and Adam, <laughs> uh, or Captain Adam uh, stops him from this assassination. But it's like no one even notices it. And if you go a few more pages towards the front, then you have a scene where the question is uh, talking with this dirty cop about trying to take out Harley. So I have to assume this guy that's trying to kill him is this dirty cop. Now the cop also talks about uh, Sarge. And that's Sarge Steele, who is a real character, who is a a, 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 a good good guy, kind of like a like a crime noir, like you know, uh, PI kind of guy. There's been a couple scenes in here where uh, Peacemaker is getting beat up by someone with a metal hand, and if you look, it's actually only the left hand that you ever see. He's punching him from multiple directions, but it's always the left hand. That's Sarge Steele. So again, not really named in the comic, but that is clearly Sarge Steele. It. There's a couple ways to read this. I kind of read it that the vice president, who is at the at the very end, obviously becomes president, who is the father of Nightshade, who wants to basically get rid of the superheroes. This cop and Sarge Steele basically have plotted to take out uh, both Captain Adam, which they do, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and the president, knowing the president wants to die. Because if he dies, he'll get resurrected by Captain Adam. But if Captain Adam's not there to resurrect him, then he can never be resurrected. The vice president becomes president. The superhero, he can disband Pax Americana and get rid of the superheroes and all the things this, this VP kind of wants. So there's – like I said, there's like two conspiracy theories going on. But the main one being the president wants to get himself killed. Charles so I'm got- waiting for you to announce your new podcast where you just explain Grant Morrison books. Oh, oh, I, I think, it, and I, I could be totally dead wrong on some of this stuff, but this is the. Way, I mean, we went through well, this. Isn't the guy trying to assassinate the question? Who's that? The guy trying to assassinate the Harley 2008. Me- isn't that the question? No. You sure? Yeah. He ends with a question. No, that's not the question. Are you sure? Yeah. You never see his face. No, but I'm. I'm like he, the 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 question wouldn't. Uh, I don't think the questions. I the the guy there. No, I don't think that's the question. I mean, it, he he kind of he kind of looks like. I mean, he kind of has wearing some of the same clothes, but I I don't think that's supposed to be the question. Uh, but I mean, it's possible. But <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the cop. Because then, well, so again, we're going backwards forwards here. So we have the scene where Sarge Steel kills all the scientists. But the thing is, they kicked him out of Pax. Oh no, he no he's no he's, no, he's in no he's in there. No, yeah, it's because that's a later. But it's that's a later version because he has the the blue Brock. suit in there. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, it wasn't the question. So there's a scene here where the scientists, you know, um, 
where Captain Adam is reading the haunted comic book that's basically kind of been the main uh, kind of story element through the different multiversity comics. And he hears, uh, I heard something knocking on the door to get in. This is the point where I think there's a couple ways to read this. They're tr- the, this the scientists are trying to help Captain Adam. Sarge Steele goes to kill the scientist to kind of not, you know, so they can't bring him back or anything like that. But to me, you know, when you read this, Captain Adam goes back and forth through all reality. He can leave whenever he wants. At this point, he leaves to go to Final Crisis is a possibility because he's in the Final Crisis with all the different Superman fighting the big uh, vampire guy mm-hmm. in those, those two parts. But it's also very possible, and I'm and I'm, I'm more leaning towards the point where this is he actually leaves to go basically join multiversity and fight the gentry and everything like that because that's the thing you know knocking on the door to get in through these dimension right mm. so these these are this is the the gentry that have been kind of through the regular issues trying to slowly get through and so he's like cool i have to go i am the champion of this universe i have to go save it so at this point it doesn't matter because he's gone so he he can't save president harley and if you go back to the um if any of you who are listening are getting a headache <laughs> Oh, it's fine. It's fine. If you go back to it's, the very, it's, it's only natural. If you go back to the end, where he's kind of having this epiphany at the gravestone of his father, uh, he's there. So he's uh, so uh, Captain Adam's there. So he's there at the beginning, kind of putting him on this path, knowing that he's not going to be there later. But it doesn't matter because he can always come and save him whenever he wants, because that's just what Captain Adam does. Then there's a great like uh, was a, it's like thirty two page multiple timeline breakdown of the death of peacemaker's wife Mm -hmm. and if you look really closely it does a guy kind of skulking around trying to find him some people think that's um that that's um, sarge steel but if you look really closely he's actually got two robotic arms and if you go back to the point where at the very beginning where the vice president and um uh with the vice president's in the uh the museum the uh, the Pax Americana Museum. There's actually two robotic arms stuck on the wall. That is actually a very obscure Captain Adam villain named Iron Arms, back from the Charlton universe. And I don't think they, I don't think they've ever appeared in the regular DC universe. It, he could have. I have no idea. But I, I don't think he has. Well, who is the who's the guy with the gloves and the? I mean, there's there's so, other things there. I don't know who they all are. Yeah, I don't know who they all are in, in those little in those little. Well, I mean, I, I think it's here. interesting because I mean. Pax already is is talking about peace. I mean, in the title, and Pax is also dealing with like the crucifixion and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of religious, a lot of religious, a lot of peaceful stuff. stuff. I mean, because what's great is is quietly. I mean, just alone in the first shot, quietly does an amazing job with the peace symbol, <coughs> making it look the flag burning, making it look like almost two infinity symbols on one another. Well, no, it's just, well. It's a peace sign. And it's a peace sign, but it's the infinity symbol. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we'll get we'll get there in a second. Yeah. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> so We're never there when it comes to now. Person. Well, whether you know, there's again a couple ways to read this. My interpretation is that Steel and the VP and all this get Iron Arms to basically kill her because she's one of the few people that can out the plan of the president and peacemaker to kill the president they they i think at this point they they know that peacemaker is supposed to kill the president because they've been torturing him and stuff so they want this to still succeed they just want to make sure captain adam's out of the picture the wife is dead so she gets killed now whether they whether they kill iron arms just to shut him up whether it was sarge steel impersonating iron, Mar- iron arms i mean fuck morrison only knows uh, <laughs> did, did you be- did you tweet more or he's not on twitter is no he? no no then we get a great uh, little kind of back and forth with Question Blue Beetle, which is one of the best parts of the panel. And again, they're talking about, you know, who killed Nora O'Rourke, which is kind of a who killed a comedian, sort of. That's mm. the the thing from Watchmen that I think a lot of people compare it to. But they're talking about Algorithm 8, which earlier they said is the thing that sort of created Judah Master. But – I'm sorry, not Judah Master, Peacemaker. But it, I don't think – but he's, they, they say like the 8 is not a number. It's, it was, it was, it's, it's the infinity symbol. It's not actually – it was never a number. Mm. So to me, it's like – I don't think there, this algorithm doesn't exist. It's it's just the time in which Captain Adam can make things flow because it all comes back to itself. Cause then you get the parts of the vice president talking with uh, his daughter and talking about you know this, the superhero is dead. You know we got to shut it down. And then we get the last scene, which is the opening scene, mm-hmm. which is you know you know you know why did you kill the president? And, and it, it, you know 
you know, they say here, you know, we've run the recordings backwards, forwards, nothing makes sense, you know, why'd you kill the president? But there's so much of that backwards, forwards is through this book, meaning, you know, kind of giving you the hint that you can read this either way. So if you if you do go back to the start of it, you see the president's ring, which has the infinity symbol. Again, people said it's an eight, and, and later in the issue, he's like, no, it's, it was never a number. And it makes the peace sign kind of catch the, – the, the flag catches on fire and sort of forms the figure eight. And then much like Watchmen, the cover is the last page of the comic or the first page. And if you go back to the last page, what's the start of it? It's the kid, the young president, mm. holding up his father's – um, his father's domino mask as it forms the infinity symbol mm-hmm. and he is reborn back into his childhood self and there we are that's Pax Americana I probably missed a ton of stuff I'm probably wrong about a couple stuff but this is my read and talking with um, Jesse and a few other people and kind of breaking down some of these scenes and going through it there is a level to this comic that there is just not in 99.99% of comics you're ever going to read and you know Morrison does this with a lot of his stuff and people say it's confusing to me it's no, it's worth it if you put time into it because I had to read this thing literally three times before I even grabbed half of this. And then just having conversations mm-hmm. with people, trying to figure out what was going on, looking up these obscure characters from, from Charlton Universe uh, backstories and stuff. Fascinating stuff. And, and you know, I want to go back and reread all of them. Um, Watchmen? Well, n- not so much Watchmen, but Multiversity once it's done because I'm sure I have the missed... The JFK ass- Kennedy assassination files. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm sure I have missed eight... <laughs> On in those first few issues of Watchmen, or, um, fuck, Jesus, the first few issues of Multiversity, just because the amount in this, there has to be stuff I missed in those other issues. Well, I, okay, so. I, I think that what I've noticed, especially at least from this creative pairing of Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly, is that they work so well together. Oh yeah, in yeah, yeah. in giving you a book that has multiple multiple layers, um, whether or not it's you get just the surface layer of reading it in this case or you get the the reading it backwards in this case or however yeah. you want to read this yeah um you know somebody out there is probably going to go well i read this page this segment and then i jump to the next segment and like back and forth back and forth like you said um but then there's also another level just with you know um the use of words and la- and language and all that stuff you know it's like there's another level there. And then there's also another level that you talk about, like you're looking at these obscure characters. There's this this history that's there that, you know, adds more to it if you if you if you're reading to right. or reading into it. Yeah, and, I mean reading through that first time, you know, especially. I mean, I would not with, give this to anybody right off the shelf. Their brains well, would explode. <laughs> they gotta know what I, would, into. I would be perfectly fine handing this to anybody who's ever read Watchmen. Yeah, no, yeah, no. sure. What I'm saying, like, what should I read? I've never read a comic. I would not hand them this. <laughs> yeah, but there's, you know, just like everything else, there's gateway comics. Yeah, gateway you just comics. have to start with the gateway comics yeah, exactly. and work them up. Yeah. So there is, there is some crazy stuff in this comic, and I am, I am very, very excited to see what else they have. And man, I would love for them to do more of these. I've been waiting for this comic for like eight years now, or sorry, like six years now, when they first announced multiversity as mm. part of a final crisis and all that it's been so clear near six years five years maybe five and a half years how many years do you think it will take to get finished well uh multiversity yeah it's done it's all in the can there's not going to be any okay. delays that's what took them so long because they wanted to make sure everything was done uh yeah i don't think we're going to see any delays but this is okay this is hands- then i just hope for a really 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 nice hardcover collection yeah someday. oh yeah there will be uh, i mean hands down my favorite comic of the year uh uh, I mean, this needs to win every Eisner for single issue story this year. I mean, it's such a good book. Uh, yeah, I, this uh, I've you know when you're waiting for something for so long, sometimes you're like a little you have an expectation. You have an expectation, and you kind I kind of rush through it the first time, and I'm like, okay, well, this is way heavy. I need to go through this and read this again. And yeah, sure enough, there's there's a ton of stuff going on in this. And you know, well, these these you know the God and Jesus aspect of it, I, I kind of overlooked the first time through. And talking again, talking with Jesse, talking with friends, I sort of. I sort of, uh, you know, well, some the, of that stuff came out. I mean, the symbolism in here. I mean, it's 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 the the Christ Jesus stuff. It's the yeah. peace stuff with the birds. Yeah, I mean, because boy, peacemaker with the blood on him. Well, it's peacemaker the, with the the dove on his chest. <laughs> the, if you looked at the symbol of the United States, it's yeah. a dove, right? It's and, not a it's not a bald eagle. And at the very beginning of the of the thing too, when he kills his father, blood falls on the dove they have mm-hmm. in in the the cage. So yeah, th- there's a lot of that that goes back and forth through this. Um, it is 
No, I mean, I, I th- again, I think they did. I mean, just the team up alone is just a great combination. Yeah, you know, and yeah. just you know, a lot hey, of people bro. might think that the 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 art's a little a manish, but I'm like, no, he does it. I, this stuff's amazing. Yeah, quite is amazing. Well, I'm still, Charlie, did you find the penis? That is my the the, the panel that Ryan's supposed to buy. The original right. artwork. Uh, that is my very quick, very thought frazzled breakdown of Pax Americana. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some great uh, annotations online that completely demolish 90 percent of what I say. Uh, but for now, I'm sticking to it. So, so that stuff seems pretty good. Before we go too much further, um, I've got to uh, thank a few people here from our lovely Patreon. We've got some nice backers recently. A bunch of low-level backers. we got a uh, guy, Mike, one of our high-level backers now. So thank you very much, Mike, for that. Uh, anyway. We'll thank everyone officially next month once all that stuff goes through. Because we, we have to thank, of course, Albert Soy, uh, Ryan Hess, and he has his great podcast, uh, Region Free Gaming, which you can find at region, uh, sorry, rfgpodcast.wordpress.com. And... Uh, Niall, let's see, Niall Thomas, who sent me a question here. Let's see. His question is, we've gotten two new characters in our, an Arrow recently, the Adam and Wildcat. Have they, in your opinion, been put, uh, or how have they, in your opinion, been portrayed so far? In my, in my opinion, Wildcat was just lame. Adam, I think, has been pretty cool. It's a very different take on the Adam, but I've really liked mm-hmm. him. Wildcat, yeah. eh, he's, he's fine. Uh, you know, With Wildcat, you have the problem of you have the old Wildcat and I like, you have the young Wildcat. I like the old Wildcat. There's yeah. no young Wildcat. I, I like old Wildcat. I wish they had gone that, that route. Yes, but, if they had gone a bit older, I would have been happy, but I'm very, very happy with him training. Yeah. You give and take, right? You, you, you didn't get the old one, but it's good that he's training Laurel. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of like... I know that's where they want to go. You know, so and, and that's the thing is, is having the young one adds the dynamic for them to go and and have you know um, a relation maybe with Laurel and and him and all that stuff and, and add the tension and the yeah. drama to the yeah. show, which is is something that they need, especially for a more broad audience. So yep. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm okay with it. Yep. I'm, I'm just glad he doesn't have the little whisker things yet. Ah, they'll uh, never do that. I will say this, though. Um, there was that scene in, I think it was the last episode, with Felicity walking in as Ray's doing the salmon ladder. Oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, God, I have a type. <laughs> that, was, that, that was awesome. I found that, that was so funny. Fun. Well, that no, I, I, I think you're you're right, though. I think I like what they're doing with Ray Palmer because, you know, it, it, it adds a different dynamic to the character, especially being he's able to do these things. You know, whereas, yeah. you know, the Ray Palmer before, he's, I, I've never really gotten that from anything I've read from his character. He's just the Adam. I don't know. It's, it's actually, in a weird way, super refreshing to see a lighter Adam again. Mm-hmm. Because I always, I've always liked the Adam character, but ever since Identity Crisis, <laughs> like, there's always been sort of that, the, yeah, that cloud the- over him where it's, it, it's just, it's nice to see a Adam without any kind of heavy baggage history yeah. again. And and that suit looked cool. Yeah. yeah. Be curious to see what they're going to do with it. Well, plus well, I kind of gonna... like the idea of him having to design a suit at first and yeah. slowly tinkering it down to a belt. Yeah, I can see that. Well, they, I mean, they have to, I mean, eventually he'll get there. They're just going to make the suit smaller. That's what they're going to do. Well, like we talked about earlier, I'm not sure what they're going to do with it. Because they may they may not have him really be Adam at all on the show, so I don't know. Well, I mean, with a tease like that, could be in flash. I mean, he's buying a, a mine uh, I, to get the material that he's going to use to make. I kind of agree with Ryan that because they started the Flash show at the same time, I would not be surprised if you see some of this stuff really cross over. Yeah, no, no. So. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we got a couple questions here. Questions. Uh, bring them. This is from Matt. This is on Patreon. Actually, Charlie, this feels like a question for you. I started getting into Hellboy recently. I was wondering what are some of your favorite stories. I know you've probably read more Hellboy than than us. I've read a lot of the early stuff, but I, I haven't um, kept up in recent years. So, so I there is a section of Hellboy I haven't read yet, just <laughs> because I've read like the first four, maybe first five trades worth. Uh, you're probably read then, about the same. 
Of and then I, have, I yeah. went ahead and I read the Hellboy in Hell, and the Hellboy in Hell was awesome. Okay, like, I really liked that that one. That was that was really good. Nice. That yeah, was we, part of the reason why I keep kind of looking at my hardcovers, going, I need to get back to those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't read it. I think I've read. I read Night Train. I don't know what that is. And the, one the one John, shots. The, the, yeah, that was the oh, John's one. Yeah, the, the one shot. BPRD like um, issues are also good. I read the first like hardcover of all yep. the. BPRD stuff. Cool. So. Cool. Uh, as Mike on Patreon says, Oscar Isaac has been cast as Apocalypse. And I saw that earlier today. But I'm yeah. not sure he is. Um, uh, he's going to also be in an upcoming indie. I don't know. Maybe it was like like documentary about Star Wars. Um, how do you feel about people playing big characters in multiple ongoing franchises? Or maybe he's going to be just a character on Star Wars. I'm fine. I don't care. I, like, I, I don't care as long as he bulks up a bit. For I want a apocalypse? big bulky apocalypse. Oh yeah, sure. Well, unless sure. he's doing the, unless he's playing the early stuff, the Egyptian stuff. I mean, you could, yeah, you could definitely have. I the, need my big bulky apocalypse. No, no, I've been waiting no, no. this it, long. It, what they're gonna do is they're gonna, he's gonna play the role, of the Egyptian part of it, and then they're gonna CG him bigger. That's what I was gonna say. Like, you could have him like the real apocalypse is all CG or something yeah, like yeah. that. All Hulk looking. Yeah, they'll Hulk him. But he could just do the voice. But then earlier. Yeah. But then later it could just be the. Uh, oh, speaking of voices, James Spader. Oh, awesome. Ultron. Oh. James uh, Spader is awesome. And this is from a different and a, a completely different Matt. Jesus, what is with. Let's yeah, get, let's get another mic in here. Uh, it says, I'm a huge fan of martial art movies. Um, besides Immortal Iron Fist, are there any good martial art comics? I love to read some that captures the energy of films like uh, It Man and the Raid. Uh, levels like that? No. You're, you're not going to find anything on those levels not really uh what was the one he named it meant, uh immortal iron fist it's tough to do the level of action i think in the raid uh in a comic form that feels like such a movie thing i mean there are definitely uh you know uh, obviously it's not uh, quite the same they didn't they didn't hit the mark with the street fighter comics well again well you have stuff like that you have a lot of manga you have someone blade of the immortal clearly yeah. these are not exactly what you're looking for but it there there's going to be a lot of action in them but the the pacing of action in comics doesn't always work the same as it does in movies no. so you can get some really crazy messed up violence and death uh in comics that can maybe match stuff like the raid but are you going to, you know, Punisher comic could be, you know, as, as you know, yeah. gorier, than, gorier than anything in the raid. But are you going to have to hit that same level of, of you know, movable Tension action? And, yeah. no, well, movable it, it, action. It, it, it's, it's car chases. It's, like, car chases are very difficult to do in comic books to get, and get that. Yeah, I mean, you get you get a lot of dialogue that goes on between big action scenes, but the actual movement is difficult to do in comics. So the only thing that came to mind, and when I was reading these, and I'm I'm really hoping I'm not remembering the wrong title. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have any on the shelf for me to double check. But Shaolin Cowboy always had a lot of sort of crazy martial arts action. It's the stuff I've read of it. It's very light on the dialogue and whatnot, but it's yeah. always just crazy kind of free form from one panel to the next mm-hmm. action. So it's cool. Uh, let me have a couple of questions on Twitter. Let's Twitter get to questions. a couple of these. And I guess if you're looking for not necessarily directly martial arts, but just over the top sort of action in a comic, Luther Strode was very much that way. Oh yeah, yeah. I never really read that. Justin Jordan, Dead Body Road. Yeah, yeah. Spread. D, uh, he did what? Deep, Deep Space, or what was that one that came out last week? I, I evidently missed it. Deep Space. Yeah, I think it's Deep Space, yeah. Yeah, that one was good, too. Yeah. Uh, it's from Mitchell. Hi, Mitchell. Mitchell. Nice. Yeah. What's up, Mitch? You need uh, to get that order in, man. He says, you heard the new Star Wars trailer is getting released on Friday? Yes. I'm excited for that. Hopefully it leaks, like, Wednesday afternoon. Um, so as soon as they announce the exact second it's going to come out, that's when it's going to leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They exactly. just have to announce when it's coming. Then all right. it- Well, it's all day Friday. All day Friday. Yeah, all the, apparently, like, yeah. all day Friday and all day Sunday or something weird like that at select theaters. Yeah. Like, in front of every show. No, I just I just don't remember the big announcement for the Age of Ultron trailer. Yeah. That just, like, nope, it's now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, aren't they doing it during one of the games on Thanksgiving? 
No, it's inside uh, theaters on Friday. Uh. He says, uh, so what are, good star- what are some good Star Wars traits to read? Dark Empire is always going to be your number one answer because that is a fantastic comic. Don't they have a nice hardcover for like that in the follow-up? There's a hardcover for like the th- like the two or three volumes. Yeah, yeah. this has been three Dark Empires. This yeah. is a, which are like kind of the Dark Horse's version of yeah. directly after the events yeah. of yeah. of uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so really good. Uh, you know, I didn't keep up with the Star Wars comics as much as maybe some other people, but I I, I mean, Dark Empire is awesome. Hands hands down, will always um, be one. You of know. Those. One of these days, I need to sit down with you to figure out what of those Dark Horse hardcovers are still able to be ordered. Not before many. Gone, gone, not, gone, not gone, many. gone. I read, um, I read Legacy, Knights of the Old Republic. I never did Knights of the Old Republic. I read um, enough Legacy to know I need to finish that series. But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Legacy's good. Um, Knights of the Old Republic and is more that's funny. The, or, I want to say the original Legacy. Because they had the newer legacy one. Yeah, there's been a couple of legacy volumes, yeah. Yeah. Um the Brian Wood stuff was good. The last Oh run. yeah. The Brian Wood stuff was amazing. Mm. I in between it, it stabs me a little bit that that's not canon. Yeah. Just, <sighs> well no, isn't that isn't that canon? Because it's supposed to be after As far as I know, from what their announcement was, was none of that Dark Horse Star Wars was considered canon. Yeah. yeah. No. Nothing that would include that. Yep. No no nothing pre marvel and pre whatever their first book which i'm sure will be on january it's all yeah. gone so this is from trip what's up good trip? buddy trip here uh customer at the store uh it says thoughts on the new flash creative team now that we're six or thoughts on the flash now that we're six issues into the new creative team i'm probably still eight issues behind that so i don't, <laughs> I don't have an opinion on the new guys yet you guys you guys catch up on uh current on flash i am i think i'm current <laughs> that's always the the trouble is like i'm like it's been a while since i read a flash comic am i current <laughs> um overall though i've liked a lot of what they've done with the sort of older barry running mm-hmm. back running back um but i'm really this is one of those stories that if they manage to really nail the landing like end on the right kind of finale for it they'll have me sold completely but at this point it's like I could see them screwing it up so bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Booth's artwork is fine. Um, you know, the story is like, it's, it's okay. I, I want it to end well. I, I kind of have, yeah. it's almost weird. So far, my feeling is the downside is Wally. Like they made such a big deal about how they were yeah. introducing Wally. And I don't feel like they've really introduced Wally at all. They they kind of made him well, a stereo, stereotype when he was a kid. And, well, they introduced him and then they reintroduced him as himself in the future. Yeah. So it's like it. it, it there's some. There's a little. I, I think what you, what you said hits. You know, hits it exactly. It's since they're dealing with so much time stuff. It's like, especially how are you going to get out of this story without tripping? Yeah. And if they trip, it's going to bomb hardcore. And if they don't trip, it'll be a. It should be fairly solid. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's been okay. I've liked it. My uh my Twitter is acting up here. I, I'm having some trouble loading some of these here, so I got one last one that I'm going to read. Uh, it's actually time to wrap up anyway. So, uh, this is from Stefano. What's up, Stefano? I saw that you got that package. Yeah, yeah. He says, "What was the moment that flipped uh, the switch from reads comics to comic fan?" So you're just someone that reads comics, and one day you're like, "No, I just don't read comics. I'm actually a full on comic fan." I don't. I don't know. I don't think there's – for me, I don't think there was like a th- one thing that did it. Well, maybe the death of Superman. That – Man, Superman dying just is – Well, that felt like like that – Is your is your I mean, point of origin. You know, I mean I was definitely – I like comics and I, I – at that time. And I mean that was sh- shortly after I started reading comics. But that kind of was like – you're like, whoa, this is like a big thing. And ah, this is really cool to kind of be in the – in this – group of people and, and in this sort of community, you know, even though it was early, right, you know, it felt like that was a big deal and it it, it made me more excited than I had been up until that point, you know, to really read these comics, even though, you know, I mean, not the best story I ever made, and but it was such a big deal. That, that may kind of be that moment that flipped for me. I mean, things came out later that I liked way more, obviously, but that may have been the first big one. That's, that's, that's all I could think of. 
I think my moment of flip is completely weird by comparison to what you just said. Okay. I don't think it was a moment. <laughs> well, no, it, it's it wasn't a moment within comics. I think that flipped me. It was the. <sighs> It was the introduction of Cable. Well, no. It, it was when you start sort of like, especially when you got into some of the 90s television, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I started seeing like dark, because I had been reading comics and various trades and that kind of stuff for a long time. But I hadn't really started to travel to comic shops all the time or anything. It was primarily just, hey, I got given this trade or they subscribed me to this Spider-Man comic book or I happened to be at Costco and they were selling this bundle of comics. Like I wasn't like a diehard collector until I think I started seeing stuff like the um, birth of the demon kind of stuff Mm -hmm. showing up on like Batman, the image series or dark Phoenix saga showing up on like the X-Men cartoon. Like there was this, this sudden like recognition of, I know this story. I know where they got the source material. This is badass. This is awesome. I can, kind of screaming from the heavens it always made me wanted to go back and like i need to reread that story and like i I think that in a way started having more of a a flip for me just because my comic reading experience prior to when i started seeing that kind of stuff was very sort of singular i i read comics at home i didn't really talk to people about comic book stories yeah i think I think for me there was there was not one kind of switch. I think for me it was more gradual yeah, yeah, yeah. change. Because, I mean, when um, when I was a teenager it was, you know, it was around. You know, the, yeah. the cartoons were there and stuff. And I'd always had comics, you know, just random comics that I somehow acquired and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but I think it was, you know, towards the tail end of high school, especially, you know, when you and I met, first met, you know, kind of being exposed to, you know, Sandman and yeah, I, I think it was just the gradual, like, oh, comic books, let me get into this. Oh, I like these. So I got into those. And after high school, it was kind of like, I kind of had that jump into where it's like, oh my gosh, I can get comics now because I have a job and <laughs> and stuff. And then I, it, but it was too much at the time. Yeah. And then, you know, I left comics for a while. And when I came back the second time, it was, you know, I was more... Like, I, I jump back into it, but I jump back into it going, you know, not necessarily, I want to read about this character. What should I read? Yeah. Right? Like, like, give me this, give me the stuff that's, you know, that's, you know, you recommend. Hmm. You know what I mean? Versus kind of the, kind of the, the young, you know, when you're younger, you can just kind of fall into whatever, right? It's like, yeah. a, you know, you, you grab something and you, you always had that. You always flip through back issues and like, oh, I remember that issue. I don't know why I remember that issue, but I had that random Iron Man issue with Goliath on the cover or something. Um, you know, but I think it's, I think there's, it, it's, it's almost like it just depends on the person. But for me, it was like two things. Yeah. You know, it was kind yeah. of just the randomness of getting back into comics on my own terms and then kind of getting back in going, I want to read good stuff. I don't want to, you know, because there's a lot of great stuff out there. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, that's going to wrap it up. It appears my Chrome needs to update, and it's wigging stuff out. So Wigging stuff out. It's fine, though. We're actually over a time limit anyway. So, uh, Thank you, everyone, for being here. And I know uh, hopefully Toby and Bryce serve. And I think Omar. I think we're going to have a full house next week. So. Yeah, we have a full house and a dis- uh, and book, book club. of the month. Yep, 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 which is uh, Black Sad. So, yeah, so we're, we're announcing the next one. Next week, <laughs> next yeah. Week or- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this episode and all our previous episodes are available at geekbox.net and comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, you can discuss this episode at forums at geekbox.net and the Geekbox Facebook group. Don't forget digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. That's where you can go and buy our, uh, our all your digital comics from our storefront. I've had actually someone ask me today, you know, hey, how can I support you guys? You know, what's up with the digital store? Well, there it is, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. You can go subscribe. You never have to go back to the storefront. You just do it once and you'll get your books forever. Oh, as long as the series is out. Uh, Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. Go there if you want to give us a little more direct money. Uh, we have a bunch of rewards on there. We're getting close to our first stretch goal, so that's cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Go support us. Uh, Omar's got Conspirator Brock. I'm sorry. Omar's Bro- got Conspirator Brock. Brock's got Conspir- Conspirator Brock.com. Omar's got ComicsIntoKind.com, unless you guys want to switch websites for a month or something. No, I'm, a, I'm that'd, be, right. that'd be fun. I, I, I like doing my pull lists. I like it. 
is Omar's last week, next week? I like, think is this his big? Yeah. So join us next week for Omar's big finale podcast. Possibility of him being on the week after. I'm going to talk with him because I know he's not leaving till a little bit into December. Uh, so since next week's the first, <laughs> he keeps getting pushed back. Well, pushed no, back. no, I know we've known for a while. It's it's possible he's going to be on the week after. Okay. Uh, so, but more than likely next week, I think is going to be his last. So, so he will tell us when the finale is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Charlie. So good. join us next week to find out if it's the finale. I think of- it is. I <laughs> well, think gotta, it is. But there's, there's the shit there's out of this possibility he'll be on one more. But we'll figure it out. Uh, Charlie's got the Infinite Long Blast podcast and the Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension podcast. His Doctor Who podcast. I'm on Twitter. Ryan Higgins. Ryan Brock is Brock Sager. Omar is Comics of the Kind. Bryce is Larson. Bryce. Toby is Toby XI. Charlie's Insanity and Chaos. Uh, don't forget to uh, listen to Geek. Box, the comedy button, good job, brain, and the all talk podcast. A bunch of other podcasts in our little network. So there you go. Uh, that's it. You can also order gift certificates from the Comic Conspiracy. For you can your friends. You can do that. Uh, we ship stuff out. We have a bunch of stuff in stock. So if you're looking for book, books for the holidays, great stocking friends. stuff for Pete. We, yeah, great stocking stuff for. I ask, I ask for them. Definitely. Well, I want them. We always sell a lot of gift certificates around Christmas. So. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll be back next week.